And Michael, I know this is probably a rhetorical question, but do you have any regrets? <laughs> you know, um, we did a lot of uh, a lot of back testing, and I've gone back and I've looked at the numbers. And on August 10th of 2020, when we announced our $250 million Bitcoin buy, uh, since then, Bitcoin's up 72%. The money supply is up 17%. The Nasdaq's down 2%. Gold's down 9%. The S&P is up 9%. And the only thing that looks better than the money supply expansion is single family homes up 26%. I couldn't have bought billions of dollars of single family homes. And so that's not even practical. So the bottom line is the Bitcoin strategy is 10x better than any other alternative. Bitcoin plunged to about $17,749 at around 4.15 Eastern time on Saturday afternoon as the sell-off in the crypto market accelerates. Meanwhile, the Ethereum price has dipped under the closely watched $1,000 per ETH level, down 10% over the last 24 hours, while BNB, XRP, Solana and Cardano have all lost a similar amount. The combined crypto market has lost around $400 billion over the course of this month, plunging the combined market capitalization below $1 trillion down from $3 trillion in November last year. Bitcoin bounced back to around $18,955 and Ether was trading at about $995 just after 8 p.m. Eastern Time. The carnage in the crypto market is partly caused by pressure from macroeconomic forces, including spiraling inflation and a succession of Fed rate hikes. We have also seen these blue-chip cryptos track equities lower. It doesn't help that crypto firms are laying off large swaths of employees and some of the most popular names in the industry are facing solvency meltdowns. The Bitcoin price dropping under the psychological $20,000 barrier than it first topped in late 2017 before entering a three-year bear market has lost around $10,000 from its price since earlier this month as fears over Federal Reserve monetary tightening and the rising risk of a recession drive on asset prices across the board. MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor, in a reaction to the recent crash, said that they have not received any margin calls till now and they are confident of the company's balance sheet as it can manage their collateralized debt very well. He revealed that they have borrowed $2.2 billion at a blended interest rate of 1.8%, and this was before the recent U.S. Federal Reserve rate hikes. Michael Saylor also shared a lot of other information, including when he believed Bitcoin will bounce back. Before we listen to Michael Saylor's recent interview, we want to use this opportunity to thank all our viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for watching our videos. I don't regret it. Uh, we've got $2.8 billion worth of Bitcoin on our balance sheet right now, and we feel like we're positioned well for when uh, the markets turn around. And our only other choice would be to give all the capital back to the shareholders, in which case we would have nothing and we would be struggling uh, to get by without any assets. OK, how about this? Is cash still trash? Yeah, I mean, the money supply has expanded by 41 percent uh, since January 1st of 2020 when we went into this kind of covid crisis. And we know that scarce, desirable assets are getting bid up in price. I mean, everybody wants to buy Rolex watches. They're buying luxury real estate. They're buying everything they get their hands on, creating shortages. So, you know, we, we are an institution. We have to take a 10-year view. And the only thing that's for sure is if we hold cash over a decade, we're going to have a negative real yield. The only question is how much. So we have to invest in something. And uh, we've chosen as a business strategy to fo focus on what we believe is the most exciting investment idea because it's a digital commodity that's absolutely scarce and only getting technically better every year. So are you considering buying more Bitcoin at these prices? I mean, is Bitcoin on sale? Yeah, I, th I think it is on sale. Um, I, I, you know, the, the number that I look at to figure out uh, sort of the a surrogate for the book value of Bitcoin is the four year simple moving average because it trades billions of dollars a day. And so after 1400 days of billions of dollars a day, that number is twenty one thousand seven hundred. Uh, Bitcoin touched that uh, in the March 2020, 2020 crisis. It touched it around 2017. It's touching it right now. Generally, it trades above there. You know, our strategy is uh, we're going to acquire Bitcoin with our free cash flows from time to time. So we're kind of dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and we're going to hold the Bitcoin for the long term. And uh, and so it wouldn't really matter whether the price was 
10% more or 20% more or 50% more, uh, we're just going to progressively acquire more Bitcoin uh, because that's our strategy. But so you it, you are know, in terms keep of the bank for sale, it, yeah, I mean, it's like not a bad price and we will keep buying more. We don't panic. We have a... We have a strategy. <laughs> We're not traders. If your time horizon is less than four years, you're sort of a trader. If it's in the months, you're definitely a trader. I'm not an expert trader. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know where the market's going to go week by week, month by month. Uh, if your time horizon is more than four years, you're an investor. And when your time horizon is 10 years, you're kind of a saver. So we, we have a very long-term 10-year time horizon. And our view is over the 10 years, uh, Bitcoin's going to be a good idea, and it's just going to keep accreting in value. Uh, but, you know, I can't tell you whether it'll it'll go down a bit here and there. It's in the near term, Emily. It trades like a high beta risk asset, and there's no denying that. Over the long term, we believe it's a low risk store of value asset. There's about 10 things that have to happen uh, over the next decade to make it a better asset. And we kind of know what those 10 things are. And so we're waiting and, uh, and biding our time. And we think that it's going to improve uh, as an asset class over time. And we're not in a hurry. So what do you see in the, let's talk, t take this 10-year horizon, for example, we've seen what the Fed is doing with rate hikes. There's all of this concern. We're heading into a recession, whether it's a capital R or a lowercase r recession. What do you see on the road ahead and how is that impacting your strategy to, you know, just buy more and hold? Yeah, so let's take the 10 sources of my pain. Um, there's no wash trading rules. So people can they, they can sell their Bitcoin and buy it back and harvest the tax gain. And that's not the same with Apple. So if that gets fixed by the House Ways and Means Committee, that's a big plus for the asset. There's 520 unregistered crypto exchanges offering 20x leverage. That's a negative for the asset class. As they get regulated, and I expect they will, and as the 20x leverage disappears, that'll be a positive. There's 19,000 unregistered securities in the crypto industry cross-collateralized against Bitcoin. As, as those things have to, uh, have to get eliminated or they have to convert them into publicly traded instruments, that's going to decrease the volatility. There'll be a big shakeout. The wildcat banks like the, you know, the Terras and Lunas and Celsius, they actually create massive volatility. And as they get regulated and they disappear and they grow up and become institutionalized banks, uh, the asset class will mature. There's a lot of ignorance and fear. People think crypto is the same as Bitcoin. Uh, if they think that, that means they don't understand either of those two things. We don't have a stable coin, Emily, uh, like UST isn't a stable coin. Tether is an opaque uh, security no one understands. If we ever have an FDIC-issued stable coin or something from a public uh, entity that's endorsed by the SEC, that's going to be very bullish for the industry. There's no spot ETF. Uh, I think it's only a matter of time before there is one approved. That'll be very bullish for the industry. The FASB accounting is detrimental. The lack of FDIC guidance makes it difficult, if not impossible, for banks to, to hold this stuff. We're waiting right. for clear SEC, CFTC guidance. And those 10 things, they're going to get cured over the next decade. They're just not going to get cured over the next 10 weeks. I think the Bitcoin's been held back by its association with the, with the anything goes crypto industry. And as that gets regulated, then that's going to actually create a green light for public institutions and public companies to get much more heavily involved in Bitcoin and is going to catalyze the next leg of the bull run. Carnage in the crypto markets shows no signs of slowing down as Bitcoin and Ether continue their sell-off at a rapid clip on Saturday afternoon. This comes as crypto hedge funds and businesses face growing questions about insolvency. Coinbase announced it had laid off about 18% of its workforce, with CEO and co-founder Brian Armstrong placing some of the blame on a coming crypto winter. Besides, companies such as Global Inc., Gemini, and BlockFi said they would lay off thousands of employees as investors ditch risky assets. There also were reports that a cryptocurrency hedge fund had run into trouble. The developments have coincided with an equities slide as U.S. stocks suffered their biggest weekly percentage decline in two years on fears of rising interest rates and the growing likelihood of recession. 
Investors are selling off riskier assets because central banks are raising interest rates to combat quickening inflation. Higher rates can help bring down inflation, but they also heighten the chances of a recession by increasing borrowing costs for consumers and businesses and pushing down prices for stocks and other investments like cryptocurrencies. Inflation is stubbornly high and interest rates on savings accounts aren't anywhere close to keeping pace, while the yield on a two-year treasury is now 3.28%, up from just 0.17% a year ago, the average savings account is barely in positive territory at just 0.07%, according to personal finance website Bankrate. For investors hanging on the cash, whether for emergency savings or other uses, it's a frustrating situation. The annual inflation rate, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, is up to 8.6%, which means the purchasing power has decreased significantly. It's a tough time for everyone especially for those heavily invested in crypto. Here at Savvy Finance, we have decided to hodl, no matter how bad it gets. Thanks for watching.